Wait, it's connected to the cloud. Yeah, Is that's that how I've been. Oh, okay. okay. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Three, two. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Panic Attacking, the podcast where we talk about anxiety through a comedy lens. I'm Stephen Rogers. I'm Andrew Chavone. And <laughs> your what? anxiety is a little is a level ten right now. I know. Well, <laughs> we got like fifty wires coming in. We got a cat running around eating the wires. Yeah, so. the, the cat uh, definitely went after my uh, cords a, a couple of times, and that is not a euphemism. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I think you said that word wrong. I did. You had like a two two ends to it. Oh, <laughs> unionism. Eunuch. Eunuch. <laughs> <laughs> so we're continuing. We got a lot of good feedback from the last episode. So we're yes. continuing the kind of semi new format. Yeah. Well, brand new format where we add a, a licensed expert therapist to the mix. Yes, and we're excited to have her back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a nice hello to Dr. Deb. Dr. Deb, thanks for being here. Oh, I'm excited. It's yes. fun. Can you once again give you your credentials in case somebody is listening to this for the first time? Yes. Um, I've been a therapist uh, for 30 years. My, my background, and currently I am a, a registered nurse, uh, but I've been a wow. therapist for 30 years. And um, I have a PhD in uh, psychiatric. Uh, nursing wow. and uh i'm really happy to be here oh, okay man. great yeah that's Thanks not a credential here. but we appreciate that <laughs> i i like that she has a phd on her wall and behind us is a poster of alice cooper <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was actually a magician ad i didn't know that was alice cooper why would just, i have it's just a, why would i have a magician ad? just a long-haired guy with a with a top hat uh, top hat yeah Looks like he's about to pull a pigeon out of his sleeve. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> we're we're here. We're uh, we got a ton of new f good feedback from last episode. People appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, loving uh, loving your feedback, Doctor Deb. They all loved the advice and uh, appreciated it. And I think we even have more people wrote in this time because now they know they're gonna get, get good advice. Yeah, and plus, as a, just to open it up, I've been. Last week, I talked about how I had trouble sleeping through my anxiety and all this other stuff. Yeah. Dr. Dead gave me some advice. Dr. And I've been Dead? Dr. Dead. <laughs> it's a... It's, what is that, a Spider-Man villain? No, it's a, a Jerry Garcia's... <laughs> Jerry Garcia's physician. Uh, no. But Dr. Deb gave you some advice on the sleeping. Yeah, and I've been sleeping great. Today, I slept nine hours for the first time, all a pandemic. Wow! I know. I adjusted the phone settings to, to, to reduce the blue light. I haven't been looking at my phone for two hours, doing the unwinding before. Right. All, all the stuff that she gave me last time. Oh, my goodness. That's and great. I, and I became more self-aware, I guess, of my anxiety. So, I am extremely rested. I think I'm a little too rested, but... <laughs> So now, I, getting, now you have you've been dreading that you can't sleep, freaking out over your lack of sleep, and now you're like, oh, this might be too much. Yeah, and I'm like, maybe I'm throwing off my groove <laughs> by being too rested. <laughs> well, it's good to know that you're not cured. <laughs> Don't have to find a new co-host. Yeah. Well, if my problem is I sleep too much, I welcome that. Yeah. I, I need that. <laughs> yeah. The problems you want. That's uh, the whole point, I think. I don't know. Well, that's great. I, I think we mainly covered... Well, she gave the advice about the uh, telling yourself that... Uh, not that you need the, like my thing I do before I go to bed to make sure I feel safe. This is what this helps. I don't need to do it, but this is something I do to help uh -huh. was very helpful. Have you been sleeping better? I never have had problems sleeping except for that at that one point. And, uh, when you were in a hotel. Yeah. In the oh, hotel. Yeah. But now I, but when I'm home lately, I've like, whenever I, the, the times I've been home through all of this, I've been sleeping great. Okay. Yeah. I just adjusted the levels. I oh, know. I know. <laughs> We should address that. I'm super paranoid about because we're using a new interface. So I'm, I'm worried <laughs> yeah. that our voices are going to be too loud. Doctor oh. Doctor Deb, is it, is it too loud? No, I think you sound great. Okay, yeah. great. And I'm glad to hear that uh, the tips worked a little bit. Maybe we can do some more of that 
Well, that's the whole point of the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. We'll we, never we run got, out of we, things. We got more things. <laughs> we came. We came with a whole butt load today. Uh, I don't know why I picked butt. Okay. I could have said truck. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why that is. Uh, the, the That's where I store my anxiety. <laughs> in the, it's all butt related. That's why I, my cheeks are so wide. I don't know why that's the term for a lot, a butt load. Yeah, I don't know. I've got a... It depends. Some people have small butts. Yeah. So if they have a butt load, that means they don't have a lot. <laughs> yeah. Some people are like, hey, that person has no butt. Well, I guess they're not stressed. <laughs> they're not carrying they a lot. They don't have a lot of stuff. They're not carrying a lot with them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess maybe trunk. Don't people call butts trunks? We'll dump in the trunk. <laughs> maybe trunk, trunk I guess in the, trunk in the dump. <laughs> dump truck. Dump, <laughs> dump trunk. Dump trunk. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, Take that trunk to the dump. So let's um, start off with, with the new things we got anxiety ridden this week. Yeah, sure. I um, well, I'll I'll start with the uh, the thing that's running around the room right now, Bowie. My my cat has uh, been. We took her to the vet as soon as we got her to get all the shots and everything. And the first one of the first things the vet has ever said to me is like, "Hey, keep an eye on if how much she's sneezing. If oh my she's God. sneezing a bunch, you might want to take her in because that means she has cat scratch fever." <laughs> do do do. Do 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 do. He the vet sings you the whole song. <laughs> well, I'm sneezing lots around. <laughs> I'm a cat who has his shots, but I might be sneezing for no reason. Oh boy, uh, this is the sneezing season. Uh, anyways, uh, she's been sneezing now. Every sneeze, I'm like, oh boy, here it comes, and she is sneezing a bunch. Like sometimes it's like. I don't tally them, but it's a lot in a row. More than like a, per, a human would do. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's people that sneeze in threes. I think she sneeze and, sneezes in elevens. And uh, it's like freaking me out. Now every time she sneezes, I'm like, oh, man, she's got something. So the second time we took her to the vet to get the follow-up shots that a kitten needs, I'm like, hey, sneezing a lot. Uh -huh. She might have that thing you're talking about. And she's like, all right, look out for like watery eyes and like maybe like – like this like snot that's a different color that's funny because that's what happens when i'm around the cat <laughs> my cat allergies make me <laughs> yeah you have you have a cat illness yeah <laughs> you know the cat is transcribing its disease on the, my face <laughs> transposing i mean <laughs> transcribing is when if the cow's writing it's disease yeah, on my she's face. a stenographer <laughs> and uh <laughs> she uh so she had snot recently, and Ugh. this won't get graphic. But they, Too late. <laughs> but it, she, they said if it's uh, yellow or green, bad. Mm -hmm. It's the opposite of traffic. You, <laughs> but you I want, think red's want, the worst. Yeah. But, uh, uh, so she's like, if, it, if it's yellow or green, make sure uh, we know about it. Let it mellow. <laughs> If it's brown, you're on the wrong end. <laughs> if it's brown, flush it down. Uh, so I now I'm like, so she had snot come out. I had to like take it like a paint sample and like compare it to white backdrops to make sure it was like yellow. <laughs> it, it, you put her in a paint can and yeah, check her up. Yeah, I'm like bringing her to Lowe's. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it seems yellow. So I, I got a vet appointment. And she's very congested. Like she, when she's breathing, you can hear her, like stuff is in her. Ugh. And uh, she's like wheezing and stuff. And I'm like worried about her. But then she runs around no problem. And she's doing fine at other times. And I, I'm like, I said to Caitlin, I'm like, hey, I think we got to take her to the vet again. It, it's, it's something. And uh, Caitlin's like, sure, whatever makes you feel better. And I'm like, wait a minute. Is my hypochondria now in the cat <laughs> am i thinking anytime the cat does something that am i like am, am i projecting my hypochondria onto this this cat well it, it this whole thing makes me sound like when people have their first kid you know they're yeah. always, they're always worried if well that's what my uh my dad said i'm like 
Oh man, the cat! I I brought I called my dad and I like put the phone up to her lungs. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, you sound like a new parent." And I'm now I'm like, "Well, do I cancel the vet appointment?" Because I'm not. I don't care about making myself feel better. All I'm worried about is the cat being healthy. Yeah. But is it is this about me or is it about the cat? Well, and the I'm vet appointment out. is tomorrow. You're out of that 24 hour window. Well, yeah, but it's a walk and it. It's a walk-in thing, like it's scheduled walk-in, and uh, well, that's an appointment. That's what I thought. What is going? What? <laughs> yeah, tell them you're you're planning on walking in from this she's, time. She's like, you're a walk-in at two o'clock. I'm like, what? And she's like, and you know, the the appointment might be an hour and a half. Like that's gonna, but you know, you're right. Let's see if the cat dies. An hour yeah. and a half is too long. So the vets are now using the cable guy <laughs> windows. <laughs> Yeah, you're, we'll make sure your cat is going to survive from the hours of 9 a.m. to to 3 p.m. So make sure you're home. <laughs> Let us in. Yeah. So I don't know. Am I? So this is for for Dr. Dev. Am I crazy, or it, like is this about me or the cat? And Dr. Dev, please refrain from giving any cat health advice. <laughs> Wait, did she give? <laughs> well, a lot she's of- a nurse. She might be like something with the cat. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I don't know anything about the cat, uh, but uh, yeah, I think your your dad was on target with oh, no. just being a new parent and you're Uh-oh, really Rick. anxious and uh, maybe, you know, it's interesting that- oh, It's right in the frame. It's interesting that that uh, uh, other vet put that seed of worry in, in your brain, like watch her breathing. Right. So you have that. It's true. Yeah. This guy's just planting seeds to get his <laughs> his kids to college. So, <laughs> Siphoning money out of you. To, like, uh, hey, if now, it starts purring, you really want to call us. Yeah. The cat now, meows. You might want to take him in three <laughs> times in a row. Exactly. So now, now you're being what we call hyper vigilant. Right. Watching everything. But you're, the issue is you don't know what the normal statuses for a kitten right true so everything you see is again um a trigger for you to begin to feel anxious and right and it's like i'm hearing this like gargling sound when she, <laughs> she breathes and it's like i've heard animals and everyone breathe and that is not a sound breathing makes does it sound a gargoyle makes it, the gargoyling sound. <laughs> it sounds like she swallowed a gargoyle. It's like, <laughs> is there concrete in there? It's like rattling around, but then like, and she's like wheezing and stuff. And I'm like, any, if I was doing those, breathe, if I was breathing like that, I would go to a doctor. Right. So it's like, but I don't want to, I feel so should is, should I be? I feel like shame if I, it is the parent thing. I just want to be looking out for the cat. I don't want it to be about me. Well, there's no shame in the parent thing. That's right. what I because mean, parents love and care for their children. So right. That that that's fabulous. It would be shame if you didn't have those kinds of worries. Okay, right. Good. So how how did you feel after you made the appointment? Um, I immediately started uh, second guessing if I should have made it. Okay, so uh, I would think that after the appointment, you felt a little better, like, okay, so I'll go in tomorrow, but something else made you begin to have doubts about doing that. Yeah, it's like, uh, what if it's uh, nothing? But then, what if if it's something? What if it is nothing? 50 50. if it's nothing, you spent 50 bucks for nothing, but you've done that before, right? Going I don't know what kind of vets you're going to, yeah. Mom. <laughs> Our, sounds like Dr. you're Dev. just cream. cream. <laughs> 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 you did it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh I don't. Yeah, fifty bucks for a vet. I've wasted fifty bucks on a comedy festival. Like, <laughs> like, I, like, but they reject me immediately. This is this cat is is not a. This cat's gonna cost me. I don't care what it costs. I, but I know it'll be more than that. Oh, but okay. it's like it's gonna cost you a mouth and a nose. Yeah, it's gonna cost yeah. me a whole cap. Uh, <laughs> Well, look at, I would look at it this way. I would go to the appointment and look at it like you're paying for a consultation. Mm-hmm. So 
what you need to do is not ask what's wrong with the cat. Ask the vet to explain to you what's normal about mm. this kitten and the breathing. Oh, man. And looking at the cat right now, it's running around, jumping around. It's obviously, obviously if it had something wrong with it, wouldn't it? Right. Know, moping around and sleeping. But, but I don't know anything about cats. But I don't think, like I've had, it's not my first animal, but it is my first uh situation where i'm in charge of the vet going uh so i think that might be part of it but i don't think i'm crazy like i, I know that something's up but it could just be allergies or something but i don't want to be that guy that's uh uh always thinking of the to the vet and uh i don't want to be so much the uh, i don't want to be a helicopter pet parent well I guess. this is my own advice when i used to have a dog which my mom now or my mom has. <laughs> yeah, we not, should talk to your mom sometime. Who's not a doctor at all. <laughs> um, when I used to have a dog, the, uh, when I would go to the vet, the vet doesn't charge you by the hour. Right. You have the whole slot. You, you have their whole time. So I would just ask the vet everything about yeah. the dog. Yeah. What if the dog did this? The dog right. does that. It eats this. What can it eat? I, I just like every thought I had, I, I would just not let the vet leave. Okay. Because I didn't know anything about dogs, so I would just right. ask them so many things. And, and then uh, they want to help a dog, so they're not going <laughs> to not answer your questions. It, it's funny. The vet does ask on the phone. Because right now, during this pandemic, I don't see the vet. They call me on the phone and tell me everything. Uh, I think when, And she says, is there anything you want to ask me? I'll probably be like, do you hate me? <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I that crazy that person, that well, person they give you the chance to ask you something over the phone oh yeah well no af i mean this is after they got my wallet you know <laughs> i thought they got your routing number they're like uh hey uh, <laughs> uh 50 bucks who who told you that <laughs> <laughs> that's uh 50 bucks is what they charge you to fill out an application to see your your <laughs> that's the the waiting in line cost <laughs> That's the opening but, door cost. <laughs> I, I am in a rural area, so that's probably mm. what's different. But right, well, that's so a good that's it, a good deal. You just also said, the vets in where you live probably see horses and camels and right. yeah, but sheep and they're stuff. like, hey, uh, you know, you're gonna have to shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty dollars covers a bullet. <laughs> so the vet is not seeing the kitty in person. The, oh no, the the cat is going in but i am oh, not okay. oh. oh really yeah what the heck yeah oh i see what you're saying oh interesting so you'd you'd put it through like uh it's like dropping off laundry in all sincerity i give them yeah. the, the the cat and they're like all right we'll have her steamed and <laughs> pressed and, and pressed <laughs> an hour and a half <laughs> I come out, there's a, <laughs> there's a little hook on her collar, like a hanger. <laughs> you put it up in your closet, really breaks. Yeah, it says, I, I love uh, dry cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> Every hanger I've gotten from the dry cleaner lasts about two hours. <laughs> it's like super thin and made out of thread. Yeah. So that's, uh, I don't know. I guess maybe, I don't know what it is, but I'm a, I'm a wreck about this cat. Yeah, what, any solutions, doctor? Well, I think you have to uh, support your own self. I mean, you have to help yourself with this uh, second guessing. You know? Right. Like, um, what, what does it mean if you make the wrong decision? I mean, it, it, if you mm. go in and the cat's seen and the cat's fine, then great. Um, but what if there, you know, there was something wrong? You you would feel better if you found out, right? Yes. Yeah. I like. I think what's bothering me is it's like right in that middle thing of it's probably something, but it's something that is on the low spectrum of something. Yeah. Right. Well, just uh, just say to the the vet when you have your consult. I, I'm really confused. I was told to watch her breathing. Mm. Um, you say she's okay. Um, but I, I'm not sure what to do, right? When, right? when I find these abnormalities, so what's it supposed to to sound like? Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. 
Oh, I feel a little bit better. Oh, do you? I oh, thought yeah. that was a great uh, I, doctor. I feel like you took, I didn't think there was going to be a solution to this. No, I, <laughs> I do feel better. Uh, I go tomorrow. So this will yeah. help. Yeah. Yeah. You go tomorrow and you can like put it to rest un un until you go, but just make a list of your questions mm -hmm. that you want to ask. And then you can also say to the, the vet, you know, I'm just really worried about this kitty. Am I overreacting? And how do I know if I am? Ask right. Well, and also ask, is it, is I may it, say cat because it's hard for me to take myself seriously if I, Hey, kitty. <laughs> yeah, it's my little kitty poo poo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, as a as an adult and a pet owner, I want to make sure that everything's okay with my schmuckums. Uh, <laughs> you should ask the vet. Is it true they have nine lives? That's, 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 a, that's a, my first question. So now, now, uh, this might not be a quick thing, but it got to a deeper thing, which is I always second guess myself. Like I immediately thought I made the wrong decision. How do you fight that? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, well, I think that you're open to opinions. You know, whenever we ask somebody, so what do you think? Uh, yeah, I'm do, open to a buttload. Do, do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So n now you're stuck. Like, <laughs> you, you have all these opinions uh, coming at you. Right. And, and that's why you're doubting yourself. So, is it because I like care more about the, the others than my own? Right. You, oh you, my God. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm the same way. I care. Well, it's way. not like my job reflects that. <laughs> it's we, not like you have, base everything you say on the reaction of an audience. Yeah. Okay. You're asking yourself a couple of questions. Am I doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. And do, you know, do I know what I'm doing? I'm not sure I know what you're do I'm doing. Man, I ask myself those two probably the most. Right. So you're you're questions. asking people. Yeah, to, me too. <laughs> you're asking people to tell you if you're doing the right thing, and Man. So you get. And, and it just so happens asking that person costs you four hundred dollars. If you're doing the right thing, <laughs> or fifty if I'm in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> So you have to like stop and rather than say, am I doing the right thing for the cat? Ask yourself, am I doing the right thing for me? How is this going to mm. help me? Right? So it sounds like going to the vet is going to help you. I, man, I mean, it is, but I, I uh, don't want to, I don't want to do it for me. I'm trying to do it for uh, her, but you're right. You're hundred percent right. Does this bother you at night? Do you think about the cat's health? Oh yeah, like and I, the big thing is if I second guessed myself and then I was right this whole time and then she ends up getting really sick, I'll never forgive myself. Oh, there you go. Well, that's worth going. So I, I, I should go. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I would do the same. Yeah. Woo! You're All paying. Right. You're paying for the peace of mind. Yeah. Well, doctor, any final words about this topic? Um. Well, I think this topic is going to come up again. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's not, yeah. not so much of a final word. But. <laughs> no, I think, I'm, I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh, Stephen knocked out his the, headphones. <laughs> uh, what you said, you, you have peace of mind now. So that, right. that's good, right? And just uh, get your money's worth out of the appointment when you have yeah. that consultation. And yeah, ask if they have any free samples of yeah. cat flu vitamins and stuff. Oh, I, I would always get from the vet like a dog toothbrush for free or something. Uh, Great. And just, you use it. <laughs> yeah, I use it. <laughs> My teeth never been cleaner and never have uh, smelled of dog food. <laughs> get a dog air freshener that smells like another dog's butt. <laughs> <laughs> All the dogs in the neighborhood would follow me around. <laughs> oh, that smells like a dog's butt. <laughs> so what's going on with you? All right. So... It's been a crazy week. Went Wednesday or wait. Wednesday's yeah. the day we were gonna do a Patreon and didn't. Okay, so Wednesday. I'm uh playing video games in the living room. My girlfriend's in the bedroom, and all of a sudden we hear this uh, 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 uh. I'm like, oh she'll take care of it. I'm like in the middle of a video game. I can't 
save right now. I'm so she comes in, the carbon monoxide alarm's off. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm still almost done with the game. So she yells at me. I'm like, all right, fine. I put down the game and I come out and I, I never had this happen before. Carbon monoxide. I know it's deadly. I know what it is. Yeah. I never had it in my house. So I, I look online and like immediately I, I look online and it says, first of all, open all the windows. I'm like, Oh, why don't I think about that myself? Open all the windows. <laughs> Step one, save your video game. <laughs> <laughs> Step one. <laughs> Step one, beat a level. <laughs> so open all the windows. Alarm goes off immediately. I'm like, Oh, thank God. Oh, nice. All right. So it's not broken. Uh, and then uh, I, I keep reading online, and it says call three one one, the New mm. York City helpline. Yeah, and report this that your carbon monoxide detector went off. I call three one one, the the operator. First of all, it's like fifty options because it's not an emergency line. Right. It's like if you have a COVID, press one. If you have buttload of <laughs> anal leakage press two i'm like if oh. your cat has uh, congestion and you're not <laughs> sure if you made the right decision by making a vet appointment press, press three. three it had all these choices of everything that could go wrong in your life i'm like what and finally it says it, it doesn't even get to mine it doesn't oh even get to carbon monoxide leak. it says for everything else press zero it's a silent killer i know <laughs> so it's so silent it's not on the list <laughs> I, exactly <laughs> it's the silent majority uh so i i hit I hit zero and the operator comes on. I'm like, yes, uh, carbon monoxide detector went off. I saw online. It said to call you guys. And this lady, this is at like 10 at night. She goes, um, well, it says here I got to call 911. I'm like, 911? <laughs> I don't want that. I haven't called 911 since I was a kid and I dialed it by accident. <laughs> <laughs> what a callback <laughs> like, literally oh man <laughs> it's like i think it was like episode three we, we steve and i talked about the anxiety of when you were a kid and dial out one by accident oh man so uh i was like oh my god so they call 911 the operator and then the 311 operator talks to the 911 operator the conference in like we're at a, a work meeting or something wow the, the 311 operator is just asking what it's like over at 911. Yeah, they're like, is it as good as I think it is? What are your chairs like? <laughs> 911 is like, yeah, but 911's like flaunting. Like, yeah, we got the latest phone. Oh, yeah, and uh, my headset doesn't itch. <laughs> <laughs> my headset's great. I got a comfy chair. I yeah. don't know what it's like over here with the schlubs at 311. Oh, yeah, we got a vending machine. And then they both, <laughs> yeah, like, we got Skittles loaded up. And then they both poop on the 411. I'm like, who's used that? No one since since internet came out. Huh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, so the 911 was on the line. They're like, uh, and then 311 is basically talking for me. They're like, this guy called. He had carbon monoxide. They're like, whoa, where is he? They're like, he's here. They're like, I'm like, has this never happened before? <laughs> has this never? <laughs> what is going on? I'm mean, the first person in New York City to have carbon monoxide. Man. So I call. Uh, so they they're like, okay, we're gonna send a fire department over. I had to give them my address. Oh my god! And when a fire truck goes through Astoria, everybody knows about it. Oh my god! Anywhere in New York, because the streets are so thin. Yes. That it takes up the whole street. Yeah. Lights blocks traffic. The look, lights are in your window. The lights right illuminate everything. every every window's house. Looks like a disco. Yeah. It's like red, white, red, white, blue, blue. <laughs> looks like they're playing Simon <laughs> in their own house. So yeah, it's like, I'm like, Oh my God. I thought in my head, I'm like, no way they're going to send a fire truck. Maybe it's going to be one, one. Yeah. They're going to send the 411 guy. <laughs> You've got nothing to do. The 401 truck's just a beat up geo, <laughs> like a beat up it's car. A it's a gremlin. It's a, it's a Euro or what was that car from Nora and infinite's playlist? Oh, I don't know. It's a Hugo. Oh, Hugo. Hugo. The one from the USSR. But no, they, they, I thought it was just going to be one guy rolling up. Because the fire, the, the fire station is literally two blocks away from my house. Right. So I'm like, oh, maybe they're just going to walk by. and Yeah, they could take a city bike. Yeah. <laughs> they could just put a spring on their axe and <laughs> pogo stick over to my house. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
but no, the whole, I hear a, a, like literally 10 minutes after, or two minutes after I hang up the phone. I'm like, no way. That's for me. <laughs> it sounds like your cat. It sounds like yeah. your, your cat after a sniffle. No, it's a little. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the gurgling. <laughs> and then it just, it's a huge truck right in front of my house, blocks the street. Oh boy. This, uh, this, I open the door, I wave, it's me, it's me, I'm here, I'm the fire department, I called oh, you guys. And, I, and at the time, the subconscious, I'm like, I'm dizzy, I'm, I'm poisoned, I'm like. Right, right, you think you have the poisoning. Yeah, I feel lightheaded, I'm looking up the, the symptoms, I'm like, I have these now. Uh, Maddie is on like a, is on like a live uh, zoom show so she's in the, the living room on a zoom show i'm in the kitchen <laughs> wailing these guys now, and the door into your apartment do they go, enter the kitchen or they enter the living room they come it's a super thin entrance where the door opens and then you walk in and then i have to let you in and close the door for you to go in the kitchen so like the, there's a okay, super so narrow the kitchen's the first room you enter yeah, well, the first room you enter is this narrow hallway that's blocked by the door that right. you, you walk, walked in. It's like an airlock to come into my house. That's where all the monoxide is. Yeah. That's, I, that's why the alarm stopped. I locked it by opening the door. So this guy comes, this, this chief walks out of the truck. The truck is fully loaded with guys. I'm like, maybe they just came out of another trip. Yeah. The chief comes in. He looks like if you cast a... Uh, of chief in a sitcom or something he yeah. looks irish beat up like he's been it's like the cast of rescue me walked he, in he does he looked like he looks like the chief from rescue me yeah is that lenny clark no but lenny clark was a firefighter in that show well this guy looked like lenny clark <laughs> this guy looks exactly like lenny clark. he comes and starts roasting you yeah i'm like i'm like uh yeah, he's like, <laughs> what's the deal with this house? Thin hallway? Man, this door blocks the whole place. <laughs> <laughs> 311 said you, you called them first? Uh, I got some 411 on the 311. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm like, I'm in flip-flops in, my, in front of my house. I'm like, ta- I'm like, I'm like, come on in this way. I'm like freaking out. I'm like, opening the door for him and he follows me in and then uh um he's like i'm like it's over here it's the oven and in new york city we uh you have box pickup once a week yeah and we ordered a bunch of stuff on amazon so our our living room is filled with boxes Uh, because we haven't been able to you can only in new york city you can only put out your boxes right right once uh you get a ticket if you don't do it right. Yeah, if you put them out too early, you get a ticket. So you, until the, the pickup day, you're just living like a box person. You yeah, just, the box bandit. Yeah, so we had these tons of boxes, all the furniture we ordered, and we ordered paintings and stuff. And yeah. It, it's piled up next to the... St- it looks like I, I'm a hobo with... <laughs> with a house. With a house. I feel so embarrassed about all these boxes in my house. Uh, and then, like, I'm cleaning the kitchen, like, you know... I'm, it said to uh before the even the fire department came it says you know go outside and wait for him but i spent right. the whole time cleaning my kitchen because i was self-conscious about what a firefighter would think of my kitchen so I, I spent like doing the dishes i'm wiping the counter i'm cleaning the stove because i think he's gonna you know he's gonna look at it uh so finally the so the so cut to the, i'm in the kitchen with all the boxes the fire chief he has some gizmo and he's like yeah, there's carbon monoxide coming out of here. I'm like, oh, oh my god. He's like, were you cooking? I was like, I was cooking, but two hours ago, he he's like, well, I, I could have been that, but you know, could I, I'm getting a signal out of here. I'm like, oh, he's like, well, uh, and then all of a sudden, he's like, he 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 walks me outside, and uh, I have to let in literally seven other firefighters. <laughs> I have to hold yeah, the door are, open. Those are the guys just to move the boxes. Yeah. They, they're just, they have to move out of their house, out of their firehouse, so they just take in the boxes. <laughs> Literally, like, one guy, two guys, one guy's holding an axe, another guy's holding a pick thing, another guy's oh holding, my God. holding some kind of gizmo. Do they know it's for monoxide? I, I assume that's what the chief told them, but I'm like, 
So now I got to open the door, the airlock door, let them in one at a time. So that, oh cause like, I can't, the hallway can't fit them all. It looks and like an like, assembly line. Like, hello. Yeah. And all these guys are like, really handsome oh maddie like is did chippendales maddie no they're just doing the other oh, i was like thank oh god. thank god yeah get, don't look at these guys <laughs> i, I could have i was like staring at their face they're like oh wow chiseled superhero faces <laughs> Keep coming. really look like i was like wait you're wasting your talent at the yeah, fire department you got the, you got the whole calendar in your kitchen yeah <laughs> Like, shouldn't you pose shirtless with yeah, an yeah. axe around your, your shoulder? <laughs> yeah, you guys have more equipment than I remember. <laughs> you guys, usually you guys are just wearing underwear. I'm, like, lost in these people's beauty. Eyes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they're, they're, they're all these people. Are in, these seven firefighters are in my kitchen. I'm like, thank God I wiped down the counter. That's my first thought. And then uh, they're you're, like, you're using a box to block your... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to fuck what? <laughs> Your oh, excitement. Oh, my, my pe pelvic excitement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you brought your own pick. <laughs> Sir, we're going to have to ask you to remove that axe. <laughs> That's no axe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they all like, I'm like, what is going on? So they're like, they're like, uh, can you, uh, can you give us access to the basement? I'm like basement. And like I said before, there's a base, there's a guy. Right. In the, oh, the guy lives in there. There's a guy who lives in there. And, and so uh, I knock on the door and the guy in the basement says, who is it? And they say fire department. And he goes, Oh, he, he opens the door. The seven, seven, eight guy guys all go down there too. <laughs> I feel so bad for this guy. He's like, you guys are hot. Yeah. You guys want a beer or something? <laughs> A back rub? I was making some carbon monoxide if you want some. <laughs> <laughs> I got leftovers. <laughs> so they all go down there and they all come back up. It's not from down there. I'm like, crap. I was hoping it was. Oh, man. Is your landlord coming to the picture here? Uh, she's not home. She's oh, upstairs. Oh, man. Yeah. Thank God. So um, I, uh, so they're like, oh, like, okay, we're going to unplug the stove and kind Ed's going to come here and, and examine your stove. I'm like, okay, great. So then we just, they say that. And then there's this awkward moment. We're all standing in my kitchen looking at each other. And I'm like, do I have to tip these guys? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was like such a weird. Well, usually when they're dancing at the club, you do. <laughs> <laughs> you have to put it in their G-string. Yeah. Do you uh, hire them for a birthday? <laughs> Like I felt, I'm like, I'm like, what do I, I never had a fire department in my house ever. Dude. What, dude, I, I know I tip a moving guy and a delivery guy. These right. people are carrying axes and, and wearing helmets and stuff. I feel like I sh if out of anybody, I, I got a tip. It's these guys. So then they go, uh, it felt like an awkward first date. They're like, all right, so we'll, we'll see you later. And they, they, I have to open the door for them. They all leave. Uh, and I'm like the whole time, I'm like, should I have paid them? And right. And then uh, I'm like, but no, I pay my taxes. I mean, isn't yeah, that what you're I've supposed to do? I've never heard of anyone tipping a firefighter. <laughs> well, I, mean, yeah. I just told myself, uh, yeah, because they're already gone. I was like, that oh, shouldn't, shouldn't be a thing. That shouldn't exist. I, I was like, so. I was like, but maybe that's why all seven came in. Like, why would all seven come in? The yeah, whole all, a buck of, <laughs> that's a buck of firefighter. Yeah. <laughs> they want to increase their tipping by all coming in. I'm like, what is Man. going on? So... I tell the basement guy, the basement guy comes up, oh, that scared the crap out of me. I was watching a documentary about firefighters. I swear to God. I'm like, what? Whoa, 3D. Yeah. I was like, what documentary were you watching? What is? But I was, <laughs> oh, it was interesting about how you should really tip them, but nobody ever, <laughs> nobody ever does. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm like, well, they said Con is going to come by and, and, and 20 minutes they might want to come down there he's like okay so 20 minutes later it's kind of chuck he, he sounds like the receptionist for 311 yeah maybe that's who i was talking to it's him <laughs> that's why i didn't know what to do that's why he uh he was watching the the firefighter documentary <laughs> he wanted some background to what happens when he called for 911 so uh 
the kind of guy who's like the utility natural gas truck yeah. pulls up. This guy walks out, no mask. Neither did the firefighter. No one had like any COVID really? preventions. No one was wearing a mask. So this guy, no mask, Timberland boots, steps in and he's like, uh, yeah, were well, you cooking? I was like, <laughs> yeah, but like two hours ago, there's no smoke. He's like, okay. I was like, yeah, so do you want to look at if there's any leaks? He's like, I don't do that. I, I just disconnect it, give you this tag, and you tell your landlord to come and replace the uh, stove. I'm like, oh, God. my God, landlord. Oh, uh, uh, this kook. <laughs> yeah. but So he's then he's so like, crazy. I'm going to have to check out the basement. I'm like, oh, okay. So I knock on the basement <laughs> door. The guy, same thing. Who is it? I'm like, it's kind of like I said it was going to come. Okay. Guy comes in, comes out. Only in your house. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my God, I got to talk to the landlord. I'm already on thin ice because I knocked over that plant and did all that stuff. Uh, so the, <laughs> the, the person leaves. This, right now, it's like by the time everyone leaves, it's 11 o'clock. Maddie's still doing her online wow. show. God, was she doing an hour? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm like, I can't believe it. I can't believe uh, this all happened. Was, you and, sure she wasn't FaceTiming with the fire department? <laughs> <laughs> she's actually over there she she hopped on the truck <laughs> she has like a ferris bueller set up when you open the door it looks like she's doing comedy in front of the <laughs> puppet with strings yeah <laughs> she's over there uh <laughs> drinking uh whatever what do you think firefighters drink probably beer they're probably drink yeah i don't know if they have like a special cocktail or something like fireballs <laughs> fireball whiskey <laughs> chugging fireballs at the fdny uh so then the well the end of it is the land i'm like super scared to tell a landlord i'm like maybe i could live without the oven <laughs> <laughs> i'm like maybe we have I, a microwave yeah we have a microwave it's pretty hot outside i could grill some eggs out here just fire up an engine block and <laughs> cook a breakfast i don't need a stove <sighs> so maddie <laughs> She finally gets on the Zoom call. She comes out. She's like, "Whoa, what's going on? I was like, you missed everything. There's a fire department. And she's like, well, I was cooking a, a sweet potato for an hour and a half. What? You didn't tell me that? She's like, well, I told you I'm making a sweet potato. That's all they cook. And I was playing video games, so I didn't realize. <laughs> I was like, that's probably when it went off. Oh, man. my God. Yeah, the oven went for, an hour, oh for an hour and a half God. cooking sweet potatoes. She's like, well, did you tip them? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get their numbers? Uh, so, fi- so, the, so I'm like, like all night, I'm like, well, it's too late to call a landlord. I better wait till tomorrow. Right. Tomorrow, the, uh, my phone rings. It's the landlord. Oh, boy. She calls me. Oh, boy. Hello, there's with the fire department there. I'm like, yes. She's like, yes, I, I reviewed the security footage. I saw a fire truck. I got so scared. You review the security. What are you, is that what you do all day? You know, and she's like, by the way, I know about the plants. I know you're not going to that plant and stuff up that dirt. <laughs> I saw, I see it all. <laughs> like, oh, God. She's like, and by the way, those firefighters were so hot. Yeah. I can see why they put out fires because they hot. <laughs> oh, my God. I knew so. She came in, looked at the, uh, she was like, you've been cooking in here. I was like, well, yeah, but it was hours before I left out. There was a sweet potato, (laughs) left out the whole sweet potato thing. And she's like, she puts on her, her, uh, son, I think on the speaker phone. And he's like, you were cooking, weren't you? I was like, yes, I was cooking, but (laughs) yeah, the stove, they're like victim blaming. I was like, I've been cooking in New York city for a decade. A fire alarm is the carbon dioxide detector has never went off. I, yeah. I, I'm telling you guys, there's no smoke or anything. <laughs> uh, and she, she's like, have you just spray, try spraying Windex? I'm like, excuse me. She's like, when I think there's carbon monoxide, I spray Windex and it bubbles form. That, that's a problem. I'm like, I'm not, I've never heard of that ever. I'm not risking my life for your uh, gypsy science. <laughs> like, that doesn't sound real at all. And what a distraction. You'll go, you'll spray and go, ooh, and then try to pop them. Yeah, then I get dizzier and dizzier with <laughs> popping every carbon monoxide bubble. <laughs> so the guy comes over. 
here her son finally comes over. He replaces the carbon monoxide detector. So now I have one that speaks to me. <laughs> Level low. And he says, are you cooking? Yeah. <laughs> Did you get the name of that fireman? <laughs> so he's, so he, Make sure you save your game. <laughs> uh, so I feel like there's multi parts to this story. I feel like I loaded a lot on the doctor, but all he did was just turn up, tell me to cook with the windows open and he just turned the oven back oh, on. Oh boy. He didn't do anything. Um, but probably was a sweet potato. Anyway, <laughs> Dr. Deb, what, what can you unpack from this tale of woe? <laughs> well, it didn't seem, well, one good news is it didn't seem very long before the fire department got there. So that should be reassuring. Yeah, I do live two blocks away. Oh, still with uh, all the demand that's going on, that, that's good. Yeah. yeah so when I when point. I think I have a COVID symptom, I call the fire department and they <laughs> put a hose in my face. Uh, so, yeah, I'm I'm with you. On, I, it sounds like you know the stove might be leaking. I mean, uh, I I don't know carbon monoxide, but it does, it shouldn't be associated with your cooking. I I wouldn't think. Yeah, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, yeah, really, that's classic. It's yeah, like, uh, so. put it all on me. It's not my stove. It's you. But yeah. we did cook that sweet potato. Yeah, but I don't know why you would get carbon, unless there's no fan in the kitchen. Is part, yeah, is part of cooking a sweet potato fan. dismantling the stove? <laughs> <laughs> Opening up a couple of gas valves? Yeah, but, but do you have an exhaust fan for the... We, did, we do, but we didn't turn it on. And it is a very, like I said, it's a narrow, the narrow hallway leads to the carbon monoxide detector. So it might have, I don't know. I'm, well, anyway, aside from that, what about the, uh, the anxiety of cleaning your house before a uh, fire department comes? <laughs> Was that <laughs> mentally healthy to, <laughs> to, to risk my life to make sure it's presentable? Is he getting rid of like the anxious en energy by cleaning? Is that what you're doing? Well, I was cleaning super fast. Mm -hmm. I was cleaning up a storm. Yeah, I think that's kind of normal. Somebody's coming in your house. You don't want to be judged. I mean, even people without anxiety don't want to be judged about their house. So. True. Yeah, the house is, yeah, there's just a reflection do it, on you. Just don't do it when the house is on fire. Yeah, I got to gotta make it look nice. The house is on fire. I got to clean the stove. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just think, uh, you know, uh, Stephen has a good point. Maybe it was nervous energy also, but. Um, you know, if people are going to come in, you, you want the pathway, uh, clear and you had cardboard boxes. So it's oh my God, not too so many far. Boxes. It's not I took a far. photo of how many boxes I have. It's well, yeah, so literally that's a mountain. Not <laughs> that's not too far a leap that the fire department's going to comment on that, a fire hazard. So yeah. Luckily I, they didn't, they understand. didn't say anything about the box. I was worried they would be like, well, this is bad. This is kindling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I would uh, see how I could have the stove inspected, make sure there's no valve leaking or anything like that. Or maybe just Google, why would a carbon monoxide alarm go off when I'm cooking? Yeah, that's true. I didn't look that up. Yeah. I also, I, I was missing crucial puzzle pieces here because I didn't know about the sweet potato baking because <clears throat> we never really baked something that long right? since we were in the apartment. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if the, you know, the ovens get really dirty, so I don't know if, uh, if stuff being burned inside the oven would cause that, so it might be worth a look, or what the yeah. temperature was of the stove. Uh, but there's another question about, you know, your landlord reviewing the security footage. <laughs> yeah, what, is, what is going on? <laughs> Well, that, that would be normal, right? I mean, but where are these cameras? I would want to know where the cameras are. <laughs> yeah. That person has more issues than I do. <laughs> oh, for sure. That's her free well, time. She doesn't yeah. unwind with a movie. She unwinds looking at the street that's outside of her house. Yeah, well, the street just, movie. <laughs> mean streets. Seems, it seems like a necessity in New York to have security cameras, but I would just want to know where they are. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're outside of the house, I hope. Yeah. What yeah. if she was like, Andrew, I've noticed you're doing a lot better on your game. 
<laughs> you beat that level faster than last time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, I think uh, uh, also the worry about whether to tip the fire uh, men or not, you know, that's kind of funny too. <laughs> what yeah, is, yeah, I, what is that? Uh, I felt like... Well, you just, uh, you know, you, one of the things about anxiety disorders is you just really want to know what the rules are, you yes. know, what, mm. what the social graces are, and, yeah. and wow. uh, have that in place. And um, so I, I think that's kind of a normal anxiety. And uh, yeah, that's kind of funny. But then you, you said, well, I do pay taxes. So you are paying for them. Yeah, that's right. I don't. When the when I get Chinese food delivered, I don't. That doesn't come out of my paycheck. Right. <laughs> yeah, I. You know, <laughs> the delivery fee doesn't come out of the paycheck every every two weeks or whatever. Well, yeah, sort of does, but yeah, it's not being deducted. You mean? It's not being withheld. Yeah. 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 True. I that. mean, literally, yeah, it costs money. Then, yeah, I know what you mean. Okay, so it looks like we have. Uh, some a lot of listener topics, so we got to get into them now. Yeah, we should, and and then and then we'll uh, wrap it up. And uh, and thank you for again for doing this again, Doctor Deb. We're excited to have you. Uh, we have uh, people that didn't write in last time, so this is nice. Uh, our first uh, anxiety topic is from our pal Corey Versus. He said, "My wife is increasingly hyper vigilant about cleanliness and constantly makes me wash my hands if I handle anything she is about to touch. I have to follow rigorous steps when entering or leaving the house. She wasn't like this before COVID. I'm getting irritable about her rules." Oh, Doctor Deb, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, COVID is uh, really got a lot of. Uh, uh, it's just making us all crazy, isn't it? So, oh yeah, yeah. So this hypervigilance about cleanliness, I, I think that's a normal reaction. Uh, but the rigorous uh, steps that that might be um, a concern to sit down and talk about, uh, Corey, with his, his wife. Um, but the irritability. Oh, good luck. <laughs> you know, when, when we have that kind of irritability with another partner's expectations. Um, it, it, we want to kind of just ever reflect on ourselves and ask where, where that is coming from, you know? So right. uh, it sometimes it uh, is a little bit of a ghost uh, from, from the past on uh, having some kind of expectations. Spooky. Uh, but it's better to, to keep it in, in the here and now. And uh, maybe he could reframe it as a concern for her worry and get her to talk about her anxiety mm. about the, the disorder, and, I mean, about the virus. And um, so talking about that uh, anxiety and uh, he would be showing her compassion and that would facilitate that dialogue, you know, T tell me more about what, what is worrying you and how, how, we, how I can help you with that. Uh, and, and that's uh, kind of shifting the role a little bit um, by her setting the expectations and neutralizes the ground a little bit. Now he's got a little bit of power and control by offering her uh, compassion and talking it out a little bit. And I heard that, you know, in these times you can't control anything. So you like to have a semblance of control. So maybe that's her way of having some kind of control over the things oh, by absolutely. controlling him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, absolutely. So she's worried about the future, you know? So what if uh, we get the virus or what if you bring it home? Uh, I mean, right. and, and that's normal, I, I, I think, to, to worry about the future. And um, I think, Andrew, you said in the past that uh, with the, the virus, it's like, past is gone right and we, we can't see the future so all we have is right now so uh controlling the controlling that is is normal but but i think he can uh neutralize that by being compassionate with her and say let's talk about your worries uh, because i'm sure they share worry like that yeah wow 
Oh, interesting. That's super helpful. All right. Well, let's move it along. Good Man, job. Man, that's great. Like, uh, I have no- nothing that can top that. Good luck, Corey. Uh, Good hopefully luck, Corey. the clean talk doesn't get messy. Anyways. <laughs> uh, I've been holding on to that one since we started. Oh, All right. my God. <laughs> uh, uh, our next uh, is uh, topic is from Mildred Christie. Uh, what's making her anxious is the, I believe it's pronounced the Derecho or Derecho, which I looked up is windstorms and oh. intense thunderstorms that hit Iowa and its aftermath. Oh my God. Well, that's it. That's it. That's pretty stressful. Yeah. A win- especially that name. Yeah. It sounds like the name of a nineties villain. That's that sounds like, when I read it, it looked like a name I'd see on a name tag and go, Hey buddy. <laughs> Not even going <laughs> to risk saying this. <laughs> Hello friend. Yeah. Well, this is a, uh, you know, it's a trauma and uh, it, it, it is a real fear. And we had thunderstorms here and uh, the thunder was uh, really extremely loud and shaking the house. And so it does make you uh, f- frightened. So this is where what we talked about last week, that uh, lizard brain uh, mm. comes in. So we want to differentiate the fear from the anxiety. Right, so the the fear uh, from uh, the storm and the danger that the storm uh, has, and then there's a difference with that from the anxiety in anticipating and worrying about it, and then um, holding on to to that worry. So I'm not sure what she meant by Mildred meant by the after uh, the aftermath. Um, if Look, there was I know the, here here there's a windstorm and all the trees yeah there's a lot of damage the, smash the cars yeah but I don't know what she experienced yeah we I don't have anything here yeah well so I think there's three issues the fear uh, which is for the event mm-hmm. uh, but the anxiety which is not you know there's no event triggering that it's a response to the event. Um, and then they maybe the dealing with the loss or the the damage uh, from uh, the storm. Those are three separate issues. True. Well, All right. Well, that's great, Doctor Deb. Thank you. Any advice on how to handle the stress of uh, the storm? Or yeah, I, I might as well loop this in before we drop this topic. We have one that's similar from Diamond Joe. Uh, and it's about the the uh, the impending doom of climate disaster, and how main, mainly that, and how uh, we're not really tackling it. Which I guess is sort of similar to the intense storms and and that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. What do you think? Well, the uh, Diamond Joe, the uh, impending doom. So, but that that's not. Um, that's not a there's many facets of the impending doom then oh there are many oh god th- we're not gonna have time to cover all those <laughs> no no i meant uh w- the doom we we've got different facets of it like yeah uh, we got a doctor mount the, the icebergs melting the game and, you were playing uh, the game the game I, i'm just thinking of environmental change there's many facets of environmental change but there's also right. multiple different perspectives on the environmental change and impending doom um, so i think what to do with that is just to try to be diverse and measure fact from uh, opinion Right. So there's lots of opinions and what we hear on the news these days are opinions and right. things that fuel the interest of the population. So we want to bring people into these programs. So it's all uh, really dramatized. Um, so just try to uh, pick a source that is uh, proven to be unbiased um, and to think about the, the time frame, uh, we're talking multiple years before this impending doom yeah. occurs. Yeah, that's true. 
you can't yeah. be anxious uh, every day those those upcoming years yeah joe it's this is something i've been worried about uh for a long time what i would say is which uh, the by the intelligence of how you addressed it and all that you probably already do this but vote and sign petitions and you know do what you can for your in, in own personal environment and reduce your, yeah reduce your green footprint by hoarding boxes in your house yeah yeah to, uh, pick up. <laughs> like look at andrew he's helping the environment he releases a lot of carbon monoxide <laughs> 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 I use up a lot of fuel and fire trucks. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. you know, do what you can. Yeah. So your point is to do what's in your control, right? So if yes. you want to be an advocate. Radical acceptance. You, yeah. You, oh, yeah. Yeah. So you do what's in your control. So there's lots of steps a, a, a citizen can do to try to uh, help with the climate change. And, yeah. yeah. It's like Police Academy, three citizens on patrol. Right. Great. They they take the matter in their own hands. Another uh, impending doom. That was, that was yeah. <laughs> and, uh, the impending doom of that was when you watched that movie and paid for it. <laughs> yeah. It was worse than that. <laughs> it was actually a worse uh, financial uh, decision than going to the vet. <laughs> <laughs> was renting citizens on patrol. <laughs> uh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. That was a bad joke. But no, I like, we got to break it up with some levity here. No, I, it's, it's difficult, uh, Joe, and, and it thinks that we don't have an answer that, like, that could easily be solved on a podcast. But, well, the, uh, the radical acceptance is the answer. It is the answer, but it, yes, that is the answer on what we can do. What was the definition again? Radical acceptance, like I almost, like Dr. Deb just said, <laughs> <laughs> I almost did it. Uh, uh, well, I don't want to speak for you, but accepting what you can't control, is that correct? Well, yeah, but doing what what you can right can uh, help you have control, right? Oh, that, that's as great. Well, right. Uh, great. Okay, so we we got another, we got our final one. Well, we got one from Facebook from a guy I'd never heard of. Oh, I right. never heard of before. All and right. then we can get to the last one. Okay. Oh wow. Oh okay. Uh, I'll I'll read it because your font is the size of uh, a small. I don't know. An, an atom is what I, I don't know how so you read it. Do you have two, reading glasses? I can That's read the it. smallest <laughs> font I've ever seen. <laughs> God. Um, so you had a two part. Let's just read the first part. All right. My uh, Chris uh, wrote in Chris Wright. My weight is making me very anxious recently. I don't want to get to the point. I have boobs bigger than my misses. <laughs> So he has anxiety over gaining weight, I assume. Yeah, I, I guess he's worried about uh, being so big he transitions. Oh, my God. Uh, I don't know what that... Uh, well, uh, Chris, I, I know you and I have talked about it a lot. There's many things that you can do, but I don't want to speak before Dr. Deb. De Dr. Deb, do you have any advice for uh, weight loss? Mentally, uh, mental, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think, um, you know, with the confinement and all, uh, many of us are faced with uh, keeping ourselves company, right? And being lost in our own thoughts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so so one of the things about weight uh, or a behavior that we want to change, um, we think in the negative, like, I, I don't want to gain weight, right? Mm -hmm. Or um, I don't want to look like... Uh, Ha, might have a body change. Uh, so <laughs> you know, when, when we think in the negative, you don't want two Mount Dooms in your <laughs> bosom. Well, that's not very really proactive. Impending boobs. Impending boobs. <laughs> Sorry. Right. It, it's sort of like, let's think about that anxiety, right? It's the same thing as saying, I, I don't want anything bad to happen. So I, right. I don't want to lose weight. So it puts us in a state of inertia. Like mm. uh, with that anxiety becomes a little paralyzing. Yeah. Uh, so we want to change it to a more uh, positive goal, a mm. goal that we can uh, maintain. So okay. it's like, you know, what, what can I do to, uh, to uh, weigh whatever pounds he wants to, to do? What, what would be a reasonable uh, weight for him? And what can I do to uh, get that 
get to that weight, right? Yeah. And so there's lots of little things uh, we, we can do, like uh, cut out cream in our coffee or, or whipped cream in our coffee. I, I could do that. Yeah. Uh, I also put chocolate syrup and peanuts in my coffee. Yeah. <laughs> whipped cream. So there's like lots of little and things. And a banana. And a banana. Uh, a little right, thing we cream. can do. And, and I suggest for Chris to uh, start with a little thing uh, right. that, that he could do. Uh, I will drink my coffee black, for example, So mm. uh, and see if I can do that. So if he goes for a day doing that, then that what an accomplishment that is. Of course, now yeah. He, now he has a sense of... Uh, success yeah success will make it easier like i'll do you know five push-ups a day mm-hmm. or i will walk just around the house or i'll take the trash out and back so these little things that he really can do uh will uh give him a sense of success and that feeds our self-esteem so the better the self-esteem the more likely we are to be able to do these changes Ah, I love that. That's great. That was wonderful. Yeah. Um, I guess that's it. I mean, I mean that this person that wrote in that we didn't get to, did they, were we talking about it last time? No, but we can get to it next time. Cause we're definitely going over. We'll okay. just save it. Christine Mimo. We'll get you next week. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we're, we, we don't want to go over. We want to keep the show though, the, as tight as possible while giving you guys enough information and attention on the topics. And it also motivates you to reply right away when we post this because oh, we usually get the first three that yeah, write in. That's a good point. <laughs> There's another way to look at that. Uh, I, that. That advice was great. That was way better than anything I had. That, that advice is fantastic. Thank you. It's so true. Yeah. The little steps add up in the long run. You, uh, yeah. you know, you, what was, what, what was, uh, there was some kind of philosopher that said, you can get to one place from another by the first step. No. By, uh, taking the first step. Is that the, that icicle guy in that claymation Christmas movie? He's like, you put one foot in front of the other. One <laughs> foot. No, that's, um, in Revenge of the Nerds, the song that comes on when they clean the fraternity house. You got to put one foot in front of the other. You got to put the other one down. That was a joke. Um, <laughs> we both bombed on the same joke. <laughs> Man. Well, thank you. I think we just had two bad references that yeah, only us knew basically. about. Basically. Uh, thank you, Dr. Deb, for... Uh, You're welcome. For, Thanks for having me. Uh, would you like to uh, plug anything before we go? Uh, just just uh, give an hour. And uh, maybe uh, people, if they have extra money, could send some uh, money to support the, the firemen, right? No. Yeah, <laughs> tip your firefighters, tip everybody. Your firefighters, no, not, everyone. not tip the firefighters, <laughs> but uh, we still have uh, the, uh, I don't know, the, the, the uh, organizations to support firemen. They could right. do that or their families. Well, that's a unique firemen. take, doctor. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, it fits with the episode. All right. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. So what do we what do we got going on? We uh, will have another live show. We are actually recording this on the date of our uh, our current live Zoom show, so it'll be the one that you guys just saw. And our next one would be on the 29th of this month, which apparently Zoom. apparently is also Ashura. Ashura. So if there's any Ashura heads out there, uh, we're still having. Uh, I don't know what it sure is. I should look that up before I. And then, aren't you going to be in on the road with Regan? Oh yeah, I'll be on the road with Brian Regan in uh, Bloomington, Indiana, uh, on the the twentieth from the twenty first to the twenty third. Wow! At the Comedy Attic. Well, we're going to have to maybe move our Zoom show then. No, we won't. It's okay. a Saturday before. Fantastic! Yeah, so we'll we'll be uh, here. We'll do a live show on the 29th. All right. Well, thanks everyone for listening. We're going to do the. The plugs in the outro yeah. for us. So thank you, Dr. Deb, as always. Yeah, next time, Dr. Deb and the audience, we're going to have a uh, guest on. We're hoping to. It's not confirmed yet. We're going to keep <laughs> adding and moving the ball forward with this format. So we're, I yes. think we're ready to have something to switch it up. We're trying, everybody. Well, we'll talk to you soon. And stay tuned for the outro. Stay tuned for the outro. Thanks, uh, Mom. <laughs> <laughs>